Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to work with the slider UI component in React Native. So first off you're going to want to install that React Native community slider and then you're going to want to import it from that package. So I've already installed it so I'm just going to show you importing it and actually using it. You can apply some styles to the slider such as its width and height. And there are another number of other properties that you can specify against it. So you can specify a track image, a slider, thumbnail image. You can specify the min and max values, which default to zero and one. Um, you can specify the value that it should start out at. If you had like a default value that you thought would be a good common value. So now that I've added that, if I go ahead and save it, you'll see a slider. And if I go ahead and slide that, it'll just sort of slide. You can see that I don't really have any indication of what the actual value is, and I'll work to showing you that a bit later. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to want to use state so that I can um, see what value the slider has and also set that value of the slider programmatically if I wanted to. So using state I can specify the default value inside these brackets here and I'm just going to set that default to 0.5 for now. That function set, set slider value, if I call that and set the slider value, what will happen is it will trigger the slider value state variable to update and the UI will re-render. Um, re so you can see I'm specifying that value here and that will mean that it will, when I save, it jumps to that position because it's starting at that default value of 0 0.5. If I want to display that, I can just put it inside this little text um, component. And now when I drag, you'll be able to see it. Um, okay, actually, so to be able to see when it changes, you actually need to set this on value change um, handler. And basically when the value changes, you'll set that slider value. And that, because that will trigger the um, re-rendering of the UI, you'll be able to see the slider value as it changes. Sometimes you might want to control different things like how much the value changes by. You can do that using step. I've actually noticed that for smaller values, sometimes it doesn't quite round the best. So like, I'll show you in a second. If I'm doing a step of 0 0.1, it's not quite perfect even if I reload it back to 0 0.5 so you can see it's at 0 0.5 but if I drag it, it's not quite perfectly 0 0.1 0 0.2 you can see there's a bit of rounding issues there but if I were to increase my minimum and maximum value and change my step to a higher number, then it should work. So I'll just show you that now. I've got my min of zero and my max of 10. I'm going to go ahead and set that step to be one. And now if I drag it, you can see that it's perfect step sizes of zero through to 10. You can also do negative values for that minimum value. So for example, if I wanted to, I could do negative 50. And if I went ahead and saved, it would let me go all the way back to negative 50. So 
So yeah, that minimum and maximum value, set that minimum and max that you'll be able to choose from. There's also some um, handlers you can sort of set up. So you can set up something to happen when sliding is complete or when sliding starts. So if you wanted to do something cool, then you could. I'm just going to console log it so you can sort of see how you would um, use those properties. And when they're triggered, um, I'll just show you that in a second. So I've got on sliding complete there and I'll add an on sliding start as well. That'll just be console log to the terminal, so I'll open that up. And when I click down on that little thumb, it starts sliding. And when I release it, then it says sliding complete. So yeah, you could do some different actions depending on, um, on um, whether the user has started sliding or completed sliding. You can also change the coloring of this component. So the maximum track tint color is basically anywhere from where the slider is to the end of the track. Um, so towards the maximum and the minimum track tint color is from basically the minimum to wherever the slider is. So if I go ahead and change that minimum, I'll go ahead and make that green. You can see that depending on where I put my slider, that's going to affect which part of the, tr like how much of the track is red and how much is green. You may also want to disable the slider. So if you want to disable it, you can set disabled to be true. You could have that based on some sort of state variable because you probably wouldn't want it disabled all the time. Um, but you might if it was some setting that was not something you wanted the user to have access to change. So maybe like the admin could change it, but the general user couldn't. I'm also going to show you one other thing you might want to do, which is you might want to use a text input to set that value of the slider to give the user like a bit more control over it. So the value I'm going to give it is that slider value and on change text. I'm going to want to go ahead and update that slider value. So for some reason, my value's not showing up. Um, I'm just going to add a bit of a placeholder here just so I can sort of make sure that my um, component's showing correctly. So I'm going to just style my um, text input so that it's got a bit of a border around it. So I'm just going to make the border black. It's not particularly good styling. It's just styling so I can see the component a bit better. And I'm going to set that border width as well. And I'm going to do a line south to be stretched so that it takes up the entire width of the screen. 
also going to set a placeholder just so that I know it's going to have some text in it. And I'm just going to say value. So if I go ahead and save, you can see I've got my text input there and it's got the placeholder for value. I'm not sure still why my slider value isn't showing. It should show. I'm also going to set my keyboard type to be numeric so that only numerical values can be entered inside this text input. And I'm just going to add some padding just to make this text input look a little bit better. If I enter values, it seems to be affecting the slider. So I know that that's not completely broken. And oh yeah, okay. So what the issue was, was that I was at, I need to set a string so that the string could be um, set against the value of the text input. Um, without that, it wasn't being able to show it as the value. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. It'll all be available on my GitHub.